Yvette by Guy de Maupassant. Oh, the Comtesse Samoris, that lady in black over there, the very one. She's wearing mourning for her daughter whom she killed. You don't mean that seriously. How did she die? Oh, it's a very simple story, without any crime in it, any violence. Then what really happened? Almost nothing. Many courtesans are born to be virtuous women, they say, and many women called virtuous are born to be courtesans. Is that not so? Now, Madame Semeris, who was born a courtesan, had a daughter born a virtuous woman. That's all. I don't quite understand you. I'll explain what I mean. The Comtesse is nothing but a common, ordinary parvenu originating no one knows where. A Hungarian or Wallachian countess or I know not what. She appeared one winter in apartments she had taken in the Champs-Élysées, that quarter for the adventurers and adventuresses, and opened her drawing room to the first comer or to anyone that turned up. I went there. Why, you will say, I really can't tell you. I went there as everyone goes to such places, because the women are facile and the men are dishonest. You know that set composed of filibusters with varied decorations, all noble, all titled, all unknown at the embassies, with the exception of those who are spies. All talk of their honor without the slightest occasion for doing so, boast of their ancestors, tell you about their lives, braggarts, liars, sharpers, as dangerous as the false cards they have up their sleeves, as delusive as their names. In short, the aristocracy of the Bognio. I adore these people. They are interesting to study, interesting to know, amusing to understand, often clever, never commonplace like public functionaries. Their wives are always pretty, with a slight flavor of foreign roguery, with the mystery of their existence, half of it perhaps spent in a house of correction. They have, as a rule, magnificent eyes and incredible hair. I adore them also. Madame Samaris is the type of these adventuresses, elegant, mature, and still beautiful. Charming feline creatures, you feel that they are vicious to the marrow of their bones. You find them very amusing when you visit them. They give card parties. They have dances and suppers. In short, they offer you all the pleasures of social life. And she had a daughter, a tall, fine-looking girl, always ready for amusement, always full of laughter and reckless gaiety a true adventuress's daughter, but at the same time, an innocent, unsophisticated, artless girl who saw nothing, knew nothing, understood nothing of all the things that happened in her father's house. Well, the girl was simply a puzzle to me. She was a mystery. She lived amid those infamous surroundings with a quiet, tranquil ease that was either terribly criminal or else the result of innocence. She sprang from the filth of that class like a beautiful flower fed on corruption. How do you know about them? How do I know? Well, that's the funniest part of the business. One morning there was a ring at my door and my valet came up to tell me that Monsieur Joseph Bonathal wanted to speak to me. I said directly, and who is this gentleman? My valet replied, I don't know, Monsieur. Perhaps tis someone that wants employment. And so it was. The man wanted me to take him as a servant. Well, I asked him where he had been last. He answered, with the Comtesse Samoris. Ah, said I, but my house is not a bit like hers. I know that well, monsieur, he said, and that's the very reason I want to take service with monsieur. I've had enough of these people. A man may stay a little while with them, but he won't remain long with them. I required additional manservant at the time, so I took him. A month later, Mademoiselle Yvette Samaris died mysteriously, and here are all the details of her death I could gather from Joseph, who got them from his sweetheart, the Comtesse's chambermaid. It was a ball night, and two newly arrived guests were chatting behind a door. Well, Mademoiselle Yvette, who had just been dancing, leaned against this door to get a little air. They did not see her approaching, but she heard what they were saying, and this is what they said. But who is the father of the girl? A Russian appears, Count Ruvalov. He never comes near the mother now. And who is the reigning prince today? Well, that English prince standing near the window. Madame Samoris adores him. 
but her adoration of anyone never lasts longer than a month or six weeks. Nevertheless, as you see, she has a large circle of admirers. All are called and nearly all are chosen. That kind of thing costs a good deal, but hang it, what can you expect? And where did she get this name of Samaris? Well, from the only man perhaps she ever loved, a Jewish banker from Berlin who goes by the name of Samuel Morris. Well, good, thanks. Now that I know what kind of woman she is and I've seen her, I'm off. Well, what a shock this was to the mind of a young girl endowed with all the instincts of a virtuous woman. What despair overwhelmed that simple soul? What mental tortures quenched her unbounded gaiety, her delightful laughter, her exultant satisfaction with life? What a conflict took place in that youthful heart up to the moment when the last guest had left. Those were things that Joseph could not tell me. But the same night, Yvette abruptly entered her mother's room, just as the contest was getting into bed, sent out the lady's maid who was close to the door, and standing erect and pale, and with great staring eyes, she said, Mama, listen to what I heard a little while ago during the ball. And she repeated word for word the conversation just as I told it to you. Well, the Comtesse was so stunned she did not know what to say in reply at first. When she recovered her self-possession, she denied everything and called God to witness that there was no truth in the story. Well, the young girl went away, distracted but not convinced. And she began to watch her mother. I remember distinctly the strange alteration that then took place in her. She became grave and melancholy. She would fix on us her great earnest eyes as if she wanted to read what was at the bottom of our hearts. We did not know what to think of her and used to imagine that she was looking out for a husband. One evening she overheard her mother talking to her admirer and later saw them together and her doubts were confirmed. She was heartbroken and after telling her mother what she had seen she said coldly like a man of business laying down the terms of an agreement. Here is what I have determined to do, Mama. We will both go away to some little town, or rather into the country. We will live there quietly as well as we can. Your jewelry alone may be called a fortune. If you wish to marry some honest man, so much the better. Still, better will it be if I can find one. If you don't consent to do this, I will kill myself. Well, this time the Comtesse ordered her daughter to go to bed, and never to speak again in this manner, so unbecoming in the mouth of a child towards her mother. Well, Yvette's answer to this was, I give you a month to reflect. If at the end of the month we've not changed our way of living, I will kill myself, since there's no other honorable issue left to my life. And she left the room. Well, at the end of the month, the Comtesse Samaris had resumed her usual entertainments, as though nothing had occurred. One day, under the pretext that she had a bad toothache, Yvette purchased a few drops of chloroform at the neighboring chemist. The next day, she purchased more, and every time she went out, she managed to procure small doses of the narcotic. She filled a bottle with it. One morning she was found in bed, lifeless and already quite cold, with a cotton mask soaked in chloroform over her face. Her coffin was covered with flowers and the church was hung in white. There was a large crowd at the funeral ceremony. Ah, well, if I'd known. But you never can know. I would have married that girl, for she was infernally pretty. Well, what became of the mother? Oh, she shed a lot of tears over it. She's only begun to receive visits again for the past week. And what is the explanation given of the girl's death? Oh, they pretended it was an accident caused by a new stove, the mechanism of which got out of order. As a good many such accidents have occurred, the thing seemed probable enough. <laughs>